Hi, my name is Vicaria Atkins and I am a UNCP nursing student and this is my service learning project. I made a presentation to go along with this. So the topic that I've chose for my service learning project is nutrition for 40 year olds. And I chose this topic because I wanted something that I can use to help people that I know. And so both of my parents are in their 40s. So I feel like this will be a good topic for me to choose because the information I can learn can help people around me. So let's get started. So what to learn from this presentation? So what I would like you to get from this presentation is to how to assess and maintain nutrition in your 40s and what you need in order to have adequate nutrition for your age. And throughout this presentation, I will be giving resources that you can use to help go try to find a diet that is good for you, that will help you on your way to adequate nutrition. So my first topic is, what is nutrition? So nutrition is the process of providing or obtaining the food necessary for health and growth. So this leads right into my next question, why is nutrition important? So since nutrition is about eating a healthy and balanced diet, it would make nutrition important because you need food and water to provide energy and nutrients that you need to be healthy and to help decrease those risks and those conditions that come with aging. So this is like a little segue right into my next bullet point, my next slide, which is what happens to the body as we age. So as you start to get older, you might see you have um, your bones become more brittle or you might lose muscle mass and strength or you might have a need for fewer calories. Um, and then you ha might have metabolism and absorption changes and then those increase risk for health conditions. So with your bones becoming more brittle, you would want to add more calcium and vitamin D in your diet to help with the bone strength. And for muscle mass, you would want to add more protein in your diet. And for fewer calories, it will make it harder for you to get the amount of nutrients that you need if you are still eating foods that are high in calories when you start to get in your 40s. But this is not for everybody because everyone is different. So next is the metabolism and absorption changes. So as you get older, your body starts to not be able to break down and absorb food the same. So you would need to start changing your diet to be able to get all the adequate nutrients that you need. And that might require you to have to start adding in supplements or vitamins and minerals and stuff to your diet to help you get all those nutrients because you, your body is not able to break down the different foods that are high in calories that will help you get those nutrients naturally. So you have to compensate somehow for it. And then with the increased risk for health conditions. So um, a lot of health conditions have risk force. And so um, most of the time when those risk for are age. So as you get older, your risk for certain health conditions like iron deficiency, anemia, heart disease, blood pressure, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis, they increase as you get older. But if you have a healthy di diet and you maintain that healthy diet, you're not going to have as high of a risk because you are modifying your diet to help decrease the risk for those conditions. 
So next is the recommended intake. So at the choosemyplate.gov website is where I got the picture from. It tells you what you need to be eating within every meal. And then it gives you ranges for the amount that you need to be intaking every day with each food group. So from the ages of 31 to 50, for fruits, women need to intake one and a half cups and men need to intake two cups. For veggies, women need to intake two and a half cups. Men need to intake three cups. For grains, women need to intake three to six ounces and men need to take intake three and a half to seven ounces. For protein, women need to intake five ounces and men needs to intake six ounces. For dairy, both men and women from 31 to 50 need to intake three cups. And for oils, if you are eating, and it's not really recommended, but if you do eat oils, the recommended intake that you intake within a day is five, te five teaspoons for women and six teaspoons for men. And so when looking at the recommended intake, um, I wanted to compare it to the average intake that those in their 40s are eating. So for veggies, fruits, and dairy, I saw that the recommended intake was not being met. So men and women were intaking below the average. But with grains, men were within that average that they recommend you eat, but women were still below. And with proteins, men were above the average, so they were eating more, and women were within their average, so they were eating within that range that they are recommended. So some nutritional tips for men and women. So you should try to cook more often because when you do, it'll help you know what you're eating because when going to fast food restaurants and um out to eat and stuff you don't know what all you're putting in your body because you're not the one cooking it so you're not seeing what they're using um next tip is to find what you need to eat so as you can as you could tell with the average intake for men and women, it differs. So for every person, it differs. So you need to see what you need. Um, every person is probably, there's probably people that are getting enough grains and there's probably a bunch of people that are not getting enough grains. And same for each other category, like with the protein, men were eating too much protein and women were eating within their range. So it varies for every person. Are you but you need to assess what you are eating to find out what you need to do better or what you need to stop eating or what you need to include more of. Um, next tip is to keep healthy foods in your kitchen. So instead of buying cookies and cakes and snacks and stuff, try to start getting fruits and vegetables, apples, grapes, uh, oranges, broccoli, like carrots, stuff that you can snack on that are not high in sugar, high in fats. And next tip, try to make half of your grains whole grains. So instead of that white bread, try to choose whole grain bread. Instead of that white rice, try to use brown rice. Instead of that regular pasta, try to use whole grain pasta. And then my next tip is to cut those calories. So um, like with the keep healthy foods in your kitchen, um, try to avoid those foods that are high in sugar and have lots of solid fats in them. And then try to stay away from those fatty meats like bacon and um, pork. Like, So instead of getting regular bacon, try to opt for turkey bacon. Um, next tip is water. Drink more water. You need water in your diet. You need water to live. Water will become your best friend. So try to include and drink as much water as you can. And that will also help cut down on calories because the more water you have, the less you'll drink of those sugary sodas. So try to take for 
instead of buying those sugary sodas to drink, buy waters to drink because it'll cut down on those calories also. And my last tip is to exercise. So you can't have adequate nutrition without exercising because they go together interchangeably. So if you want to have a healthy lifestyle and maintain a healthy lifestyle, you need to exercise as long along with getting your nutrition together. So my next slide is my main points. So main points for this presentation, um, you need to you need adequate nutrition as in food and water to give you energy and nutrients and to reduce your risk. And as you grow older, your body starts to slow down, bones get brittle, muscle mass decreases, and then those risk scores start to increase also. And as well, summarizing it all up, everyone is different. So not everyone is not going to have the same nutritional problems, deficits, increases. So you have to find out what is for you and what works for you, what you need to do in order to have the adequate nutrition and healthy lifestyle. So these are my resources that I've used to make this presentation. And that is the end of my presentation. I would like to thank you for watching and hopefully you got something out of this. Bye.